What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, it's Halloween, Pete's favorite holiday of the year, more so than Christmas and New Year's. It's Pick Six Podcast Power Rankings, Pete Prisco Edition. Uh, it's just me and you today, Petey, because we got uh, a lot of moving parts on trade deadline day. Today, I'm going to quickly run through Pete's week nine power rankings, where the former number one tumbles out of the top five. All right, let's do it, Pete. You move the Chiefs up to the top spot last week over the Eagles over the Ravens, over the Jaguars, and then they lose. Man, they lost. What I, I suppose Patrick Mahomes having the flu or being under the weather, we'll just say that's what – we'll chalk that up to that because otherwise there's no excuse for losing that game. Uh, for the first time, I think it's been eight years, over 2,000 days, since Peyton Manning was quarterback back in 2015. All right, what do you got? Give me your best reasons for why the Chiefs laid the, uh, the biggest of goose eggs. Okay, he had the flu, but if you're on the field, you're accountable. Period. End of story. <laughs> You're accountable. And they didn't play well. That's no, not a good didn't. Broncos team. And and the fact that they they really weren't in the game. I mean, you know, yeah. it wasn't it didn't it was not a good look for them. I thought they had got it cranked up the week before. Clearly, they didn't. Uh, so it's concerning. Now go beat Miami and you're back up again. Where's uh, it's that a, game? It's, it's in Germany. So go oh, beat right. Miami. Go beat Miami Sunday and you're back up again. But right now, uh, they fall down because you lose the Broncos and you don't do much on offense. That's concerning to me. Yeah, I don't know if this will be on YouTube, but if it is, please take notice of Pete Prisco spell with uh, a zero in the last letter of Prisco in honor of me going 0 and 13 last week. This week I won eight games and Pete didn't mention that, but whatever. All right. Onward and outward, Pete. Uh, this week, uh, you're looking to make the same mistake twice in a row with an Eagles team that eked out a dubious win. Uh, against a pretty mediocre is a nice way of putting it, Washington outfit that uh, the the butt fumble, not the butt fumble, the uh, the push tush that didn't work out. Then they ran the the push tush end around, so they're running variations off of that. Still, though, this offense has yet to kind of feel like it did last year with Shane Steichen. Well, not just the offense. I don't think Hurts is healthy, by the way. I think no, he's, he he's was like, hobbling in that game. Yeah, yeah, but more than that, the defense. They've had problems on the defensive side of the ball. Guys like Slay and Bradbury haven't come close to playing what they played to last year. That's a concern. Uh, Jalen Carter's hurt now. So there's worries there with the Eagles. And that's a big game this week with Dallas. It's a, a it's a proving game for Dak Prescott. This is your moment, buddy. You know, everybody always questions Dak Prescott in the big moment. Well, he goes in there and plays well, then you're going to step back. And if they won that game, you're going to step back and say, okay, the Cowboys are the real deal now. So yeah. a big day for the Cowboys, but the Eagles have to show they can slow down people. They haven't slowed down anybody. It's not, it's not been a good look for them. No, and I, I think the the fact that Jalen doesn't look to be 100%, that's a problem in terms of what he's able to do offensively. A.J. Brown might be the best player in football the way he's playing. Um, Cowboys, by the way, I'll just I'll add this quickly. Um, can they win on the road? I mean, you sort of touched on it. How do you feel about that right now? Well, they won the last time out on the road, remember? Uh, beat the, beat the uh, Chargers on the road. So – they can do it. Uh, yeah, but it's still a night game uh, on the road. That's tough okay. to do. So they All can right. do it. Yeah, All they right. can win this. I think they can win this week. All right. So the Cowboys are up to number four in your power rankings. Um, if they win against arguably, I mean, the Eagles are seven to one. Are you going to put the Cowboys up top? What What do the Ravens do against Seattle? I mean, you know, if the Ravens handle Seattle easily, then I think the Ravens go to one. The Ravens are playing. They didn't look great last week. Yeah. But that was kind of coming off that Lions game, and they they still were up seventeen in the fourth quarter and let them back. Yeah, that's the concern with the Ravens. They do it's like every other week, uh, but still, when they're clicking, they're 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 humming. That team, Lamar Jackson's playing some of his best football, by the way. The team that yeah he is. They didn't look great last week though. The offense was kind of back to disjointed a little bit. The team that nobody talks about is three. Who did you have at three? Jacksonville. Oh, you talk about them all the time. What are you talking about? No one talks but about no, them. The national media doesn't, though. Most of I, them. There was no doubt in my mind. Our buddy B-Max said that the Steelers are going to win four in a row starting with this Jaguars game. I was like, there's no way on planet Earth they're beating the Jaguars. Jaguars well, are a good football team. The Jaguars dominated that game from start to finish and barely won it because they didn't. They, they made they dropped interceptions. They made so dumb they, they lost a turnover battle, but they still won. The weather wasn't great, but they were able to play in bad weather, which is something you could take away from that. I mean, there are a lot of reasons I think you should feel I mean, good. they've won five games in a row, two in London, two different stadiums, came home, beat the Colts, the division team, then went to New Orleans and won on a Thursday on a short week and then beat Pittsburgh on the road. And Pittsburgh, so they go there on Sunday. It's always tough with the conditions. It's I tough. Guess. I mean, it felt like you're just York. being the, the, the Steeler fan that you are. 
It felt like sour. David Garrard and Fred Taylor were out there. Just they they would go to Pittsburgh. You probably used to go to those games and beat yeah. the crap out of the Steelers. Yeah, Fred Taylor has still had when Three River Stadium was demolished. Fred Taylor had the single single game rushing record in that. Oh stadium. my gosh, I'm reading I'm reading the next talking point here. I, the, another thing, you no know, one talks about the Jaguars. This is something else no one talks about unless they're named Pete Prisco. All right, risers and followers, bigger jump, <laughs> biggest jump this week is from oh my goodness, the Tennessee Titans who go from 27th to 18. Well, there were a lot uh, of cra- a lot of teams lost this week. Bad in that look. I mean, they beat. They got to be ahead of the Falcons, right? Yes. I mean, they beat. I never thought the Falcons were good. No, I didn't either. But look at the teams around them. I mean, there's not it's not a lot of stuff. So, yeah, they moved up. But, yeah, Levis looked good. I, I mean, I don't understand Mike Vrabel, though. Does he not like the kid? Why? What did he say? He just doesn't seem like he's too enthused about him, or is that just Mike Vrabel not being enthused about but anything? He did, what's the last time, when's the last time you saw him enthused about anything? Yeah, you're right. He's kind of a curmudgeon. He's kind of got a Pete Prisco curmudgeon about him. And the other thing is, I, and I, I think you agree with this because I think I know your general take on this, but, uh, Rick, Spielman said today on the draft podcast said you don't go back to Tannehill no matter what. I wouldn't either. Yeah. I don't know how you do. Did right. you, you you saw that video I sent to you where Jeffrey Simmons was yelling? Oh, I knew I knew Levis. I knew Levis, but that tells you that the team kind of wants him in there too, though. Yeah, I don't yeah. see how you can go back to him. I don't, and Rick I don't made the other point that you can finally push the ball down the field with someone who has an arm that can throw the ball more than twenty five yards. Yeah, Tannehill never pushed the ball down. I, I'm with you and. Look, the kid was better than I thought he would be in his first start. You're so I it's it like Christmas Day for you, by the way. No, I thought it would be two, <laughs> two thirty, maybe two and one, and it was way better. He and, did not and, think he was going to play that well. He played exceptional. He did, and the best thing about it though is he stands in there and doesn't ever drop his eyes to the rush. I mean, it might end up get blasted in there a bunch, but he doesn't ever yeah. try. He didn't leave pockets early. He didn't try and get out. He stands in there and he's got the arm to make the play. That arm will get him in trouble somewhere along the way. Yeah, but it'll t- get him in trouble 50 yards down the field, not on a, a dump off. Like he, at least he's trying to make plays. It's not going to be some stupid pass. Yeah, but him. he's got his arm. When he gets a little more confident, that arm is good. I mean, it's a great arm. Don't get me wrong. He can whip it from the ear hole down the field, but it's going to get him in trouble trying to fit it into some tight windows. All right, quickly, at Pittsburgh, at Tampa Bay, at Jacksonville, next three games for Will Levis and the Titans on the road. If you come through that two and one or you're at least playing well, I think you 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 might have you might be onto something early on, Pete. I'm not going to give you the vote of confidence. Well, the, and, and again, this is a tough game for him this week. Short yeah. week. If he starts, he won't commit to him. Why won't he commit to him? He's going to stop it. He doesn't want to give Tomlin an advantage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't understand it, but – if if Ryan Tannehill was healthy enough to start and he went out there and started, that would be a mistake, right? It'd be, they're not. They you cannot under any circumstance do that. No, no you got to at least let him play him out of this spot. But and I, by the way, like Jimmy Garoppolo can't figure this out because of, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. But at least Levis understood. Just throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, problem solved. Don't complicate it. Right. And All right. He made some good throws. I gave him credit. No, he made a lot of great throws. Great throws. I'm, I I can own that, even though you won't let me. Biggest follower with the Falcons who dropped seven slots from 12th to 19th. Desmond Ritter was pulled because of concussion-like symptoms. He has nah, not played well this I don't season. Think that's, I don't think that's why. I don't want to go against the, the doctors, but he was on the sidelines, and he seemed like he was into the game pulling for Taylor Heineke, but he has not played well this season. No, he has not, and it's been a major disappointment for them, and they have quarterback issues. No question about it. Going forward, they have quarterback issues. That was your QB1 in that draft class, I believe. No, it uh, was not. No, it was not. <laughs> All right, last one before we get out of here. I, but my, I will say I thought he would be better than he is. I had concerns about the accuracy just because he wasn't accurate at Cincinnati. I he love, turns he was, the ball over a tight He fumbles he turns, In the red zone. Fumbles. He is a great kid, and when you hear him talk, he he has an edge to him, and you want to play hard for him. But, I mean, Brady Quinn said before, you can be the best person on planet Earth. If you can't complete a pass, no one's going to follow you. No. And Taylor Heineke, they, they moved a little bit better. It wasn't like he came in there and won the game for him because they obviously didn't win that he's game. Not but, a, he's not the answer. No, but, I mean, you, you don't you had options now. The trade deadline's almost up. All right, last one. My Carolina Panthers finally won a game. And Bryce Young, say he it, He played better. Oh, he played better. I'm going to okay. give credit. Yeah, he played better. You look much more, particularly in the last drive. That's what you want to see from the quarterback. Five and six for 50 yards. Yeah, he looked much better, much more confident on that last drive. I liked it. I, oh. I liked it a lot. I think when Will plays better, you're nicer about everything. I like that. So hopefully, Levis no, can I, 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 I think Bryce Young is going to be a good passer. I just don't think he. I think he's too little to be a great passer. That's All just right. my take on. It. We'll find out together. But congratulations. CJ Stroud did have a great game the other day. No, he played okay, but right, he he got outplayed by by yeah. Will. 
I thought the Panthers were, were not going to win that game. All right, that's it. That's a wrap. Join us later today in the Old Pick 6 podcast, trade deadline special, 4 p.m. Me, John Breach, Will Brinson. Uh, and then tomorrow, Brinson's joined by Brady Quinn and Lee J. Doosable. Pete, you're going to go talk trade deadline stuff on CBS Sports HQ uh, or and Spotlight, I believe. No, I'm not on Spotlight. I'm on HQ. We have a special okay, on HQ. for a couple hours or an hour and a half. So. All right. Thank you, Pete. Have fun. Say hey to Rick for me, and we'll see you guys later.